Have you ever tried Crystal Pepsi or hell, Pepsi Blue? If you have, then you know what it tastes like. Okay, now think about a combo of those two. Are you seeing it? Okay, now throw alcohol in it. Wait, what? Alcohol? You trying to tell me that there was going to be a beer version of Pepsi? Well, yes. Kind of. And before you ask, it's not the whole they put the freaking beer and Pepsi thing. I lived around and where one of those Pepsi factories are. The place that is only for shipping drinks by Pepsi Co. in our state. Like Pepsi, Mountain Dew, etc. And if you're wondering, yes, then that means that we have those Pepsi shipping trucks around, running around here, too. I was told uh, of this urban myth around my local area and has to do with a Pepsi drink that I had never heard of. Some told me that it's like Pepsi Blue, but with some beer that they are never tried. Others say that it had the, the, had the drink Heineken mixed with the pe Pepsi flavoring. If you heard about Hyper Coke, then this is kind of like that. Once that Hyper Coke story popped up, the whole myth on this Pepsi drink sparked up again. What's this drink you call? You may be asking. Pepsi Smack. Pepsi Smack. Or as others in my local area, bar fight Pepsi. What is Pepsi's move on aiming at a more adult drink than their own normal drink? They wanted to keep the Pepsi brand on name on it because they wanted to have the to have the catchphrase, just smack it. Since they love the idea of a beer Pepsi that you can just smack the can on whatnot. These were going to be sold in the beer sections of stores and then later in its own vending machine. The Pepsi Smack vending machine was set to have four drinks on it. Those four being Pepsi Smack, Normal Pepsi, Crystal Pepsi, and lastly Diet Pepsi. These vending machines will only appear at malls, clubs, and bars around some states. I also heard rumors that the company got the likes of Max Headroom to do the ads, but he's not like the Coca-Cola version. This one was based off of the whole news hijacking one, with a gritty attitude, glitch a lot, and would mock other soda brands that's not Pepsi or made by PepsiCo. He would also be more weird than the Coke version, having a taste of sex and only sex. The plan was running great. That is until you they t tested the drink to taste testers. You see, this is where the whole myth happened, and it relates with the factory farm in my hometown. You see, my hometown wasn't the nicest around. Sure, you'll get the happy people, but you're going to get the most abusive person you'll ever meet. The whole myth played out like this. Pepsi hired a group of 20 people to try out the new drink and see how it tasted. This is only for that the, for the drink that would be harmful or bad. Then they'll scrap the drink and would just restock on some of their own products. If it is good, then the drink will get greenlit and will start to spread around the stores and whatnot. 19 out of 20 people tried it and loved it. The other guy said it didn't set well with him and he said he could go home early. This drink is where you replace the whole idea of getting drunk to full sh on sugar high, or as the workers nickname it, on crack. Pepsi then greenlit the Pepsi Smack for its taste locations, which did well for the first very few weeks, and then the first story hit. Headlines had this. Chaotic man snaps during party. Almost killed locals teens, all due to Pepsi Smack. Sounds like those clickbait videos, right? Oh, it gets better. Then you'll get to see everyone acting weird around the area. Teachers would sneak in the drink into some of the schools. Cops started to chug the drink while on the job, and the whole chaos just began. The date was November 7th, 1989. For her hometown, locals nicknamed the day the day Pepsi Smack. And it all started at a local bar. The bar all got into a bar fight, both inside and outside. Hell, it, was, it went so far that even weapons were on the loose in the place. 
This would later affect parents, loved ones, and many more. One of them was with these girls, who I think was one of the girls' name was Clover or something. Ugh. I heard she got fired from that Nickelodeon hotel or something. But anyway, who? These girls were having a party at this one girl's house. Their little brother was there as well, and all of a sudden, they... Let's just say, essayed the kid. I mean, they just full-on just essayed the kid. All of them, another was this one guy who works at some sound studio, and she started to kill most of his co-workers with the sound system they made by popping their eardrums, and lastly, the worst of them all. All those locals who lived in the town, yeah, they went on a purge. This lasted for the whole time, and it will dest almost destroy the whole town, and once the drink ran out. It got even worse. First, you'll see people breaking stuff around the town. Then you'll see people starting to kill each other with the stuff they may have. I lost my uncle from this day, and but it still scares me about this. But my family hasn't told me how he died, so that's why I believe this whole, this whole myth. After what people around the state saw around that town, the city sued PepsiCo on making the drink. Turns out, the beer wasn't the only just beer. They dropped a tiny bits of acid in there too. That explains the whole chaos around the area. Luckily, the smack stopped there. Pepsi scrapped the whole idea for good. Not even gonna mention it. I heard that they even brainwashed themselves just to forget about it, but I think some idiot wants to trick me into believing it for something. I don't know. If a company does this to us and changes on who we are, then we'll know once the place turns into chaos.